So with uh, with DWM, what patches do you run? That's a good question. Let me. I'm gonna have to pull that. Do you up have like a repo quick. that has a collection of? Yeah, I'm looking at it really quickly. Uh, config. Yep. Okay. okay. So I use always center. Okay. Um, auto auto start, so that I can put in PyCom and stuff. Okay. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Fix fix borders. Because mm -hmm. I have rounded I have rounded corners on my borders uh, for the windows that are open. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like I mean, uh, move stack because I want to be able to move things around. Uh, mm -hmm. Restart sig which allows me to hit like a, you know, keybind for, for, um, is it uh, control shift super and Q, which restarts DWM. I know it no. takes a lot to do that. No, I was going to say, cause um, every other window manager just has that. Like, this is I what know. I mean, right? Where like features that I feel, I feel DWM in some cases is just too simple. Something like that. I don't know is why it's a separate patch. No, that's fair. In fact, when I look at it, I think, you know, I don't know exactly how many lines it adds, but, you know, when you're only restricted to 2,000 lines of code for your window manager, sometimes an extra 15 <laughs> lines gets moved in 32 there. 32 is add. the answer. Okay. Um, I use status 2D SysTray. Okay. And vanity gaps and window follow. Because when I want, like, if I move something to a like a tag two, for example, I want it to follow mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to that. Because a lot of times, it, you know, if you do it by, you know, if you're using DWM not patched, and you send something to a different tag, it doesn't follow automatically. It just you just have to use another keybind to get to that tag. Does that make? Does, no, that makes sense. That, that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like to just have them separate anyway. I, I send it over and then follow manually. So I guess that wouldn't really affect me. No, right. No, I know there's certain, like even with the uh, BSPWM, it's it's a rule. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to set up a rule that says follow. Right, right. You know, um, so with DWM, I kind of, and you can actually turn it on or off depending on whether you, you know, so I have it on by default, mm -hmm. but once you install that particular patch, it's off by default unless you use a keybind to turn it on or a mouse click to turn right, it on. Right, right. Or you or you set it in your configuration to be on by default. So Right, because what I'll sometimes do is I'll be rendering something in Caden Live and I just throw the window on another desktop because I just don't want to see it right now. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I, I try to open I'm, I, I don't know that I am the one to, <laughs> I have my workflow. Everybody has, it's very personal, you know, when it comes right down to it, it's like, okay, so when I open up OBS, for example, it goes to Workspace 10. You know, when I open up Discord, it yep, goes yep. to Workspace 9. When I open up GIMP, it goes to Workspace 8. You know, and when I open up Genie, it goes to Workspace 4, if I, Thunar goes to 3, and so on. So I know where things are, mm -hmm. um, but... But when it comes right down to it, uh, if I'm physically moving a window to another either tag or workspace, I want it to go. I want to follow it. That's. But you know what's interesting is, um, are you familiar with DK Window Manager? DK at all? Window Manager. No, I think you stumped me there. That's a new one. DK Window Manager is uh, Nate Maya is the developer for it, and he is one of the lead devs on um, Arch Labs. Oh, Labs is, okay. Yep. And so he developed DK window manager, very similar in it's kind of a hybrid between DWM and BSPWM. Mm -hmm. And he's, I've asked him actually, it's like, Hey man, are you going to, um, are you going to have a Wayland? Um, are you going to make a, you know, tr port it over to Wayland? I don't know that he, I don't remember if he responded or not, to be honest with you, but, um, DK was really kind of cool because he actually set up a configuration. So if you let's let's say you want to send it to workspace six, you just you know super shift six. But if you want to follow it, you just it's the same keybind, you say super control six and it automatically follows. Mm -hmm. So you have a choice. You know, it's like okay, sending it to or 
sending it and not following it or sending it and following it. So, mm -hmm. but I liked, I think his, I think his window manager is really nice, really, really um, well-constructed, well-constructed. I feel like, like, I don't know, I, I'm surprised you managed to find one that I wasn't aware of. <laughs> I, I feel like I, I have a pretty good grasp on just random window managers that nobody else has heard of, but somehow, like, Linux Cast covered this, Jake at Linux covered this, I've never heard of this. I, I covered this. A, you a also covered this, that, yes. Yeah. A bunch, no, I like how it. did I not hear about this one? <laughs> He's a good dude too. This guy, you know, with Arch Labs, he's really, good, really a good dude. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think it's an excellent. I think it's an excellent window manager, and I used it as my primary for a while. Actually, mm -hmm. it was really good, um, but not in the Debian repo. <laughs> you have to actually build that one. I wonder if it's on the AUR. DK Window Manager AUR. I kind of yes. feel it would. Yeah, I kind of feel it would because of the, you know, the the tie it has oh. to Arch Lab. It, yeah, it's, he put it there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. No, that's good. It's good stuff. So when you try out something like Qtile, you said you had, don't have, like, you know, a programming background or anything like that. Do you, like... When you tried Qtile, had you already messed around with writing Python before, or was using Qtile your introduction to Python? That's exactly it. I was trying to get, you know, I can't write a code to save my life, but if I see something on a page, I say, oh, okay, that's, that's how that works, basically. You know, mm -hmm. I understand what the intent is for specific lines of code. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll you know, it, you know, Google is your friend in this particular case, because if you say, I want to do this <laughs> and you'll say, you know, somebody's done it already. So um, people that have been so gracious as to put their dot files on GitHub or GitLab or something like that, it's really, really helpful to see what other people have done and been successful at doing. Mm -hmm. That's why I try to I try to keep things on my GitHub as well, because like I said, I write a lot of my um, uh, configurations, we'll put them there. But when I'm doing an installation like DK, for example, there is a script that installs DK Window Manager for you mm -hmm. um, in my Bookworm scripts directory or at Git GitHub, so that it's easy for someone to say, oh, "Okay, those are the packages that I need to." to use to, to install that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't have, I've been pushing myself to learn more and mostly it's in the world, you know, it's in bash. I, right, I, I right, push myself right. to, to do bash scripting and stuff like that. Well, as long as you know uh, how to use a terminal, writing bash stuff is pretty straightforward. There's a couple of extra yeah. syntax things that you need to know, but as long as you're not trying to do something crazy, like writing NeoFetch, bash is pretty simple. Well, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I understand my limitations. In fact, I was on a, I was in, um, I was doing a uh, Linux users group, and I was participating in it. And one of these, you know, one of the guys after the user group was complete, says, "Hey, man, how do you do this?" I have no idea. I, I'm listening and I'm trying. It's listen. This is beyond my skill set. It mm -hmm. really is. I, so I think people, uh, you know, I think he appreciated me being honest and say it's just not. That's just not something I can help you with. Mm -hmm. Which is, um, which is why I really appreciate the comments on a lot of the videos because they'll say, you could have done it this way and it would have been easier. And I'm like, all right, that's good information. That's something that I didn't know how to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, setting up a virtual environment for installing Qtile on Debian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not straightforward. You know, that is not straightforward. So I, I did that in one of my recent videos, how to do that. Uh, but somebody said, Hey, why don't you just do it this way? And I didn't try to do it the way he, he uh, described, but, um, and, but I will, you know, I will, because I want to make sure that I'm telling people the right thing to do too. I'll make another video simply just to say, yeah, I screwed that up. I, I could, <laughs> I think it's better to do it this way. It, it makes a lot more sense to do it this way. So. Yep. 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 So with that's the, one of the reasons, 
Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You were saying something. I, I was going to say, so that's one of the reasons why I don't have a revenue model right. for my channel. Because I don't feel like, as, as just a guy who makes it very clear that I am not an expert at anything, <laughs> you know, I don't want you to come back to me and go, Hey, that you led me astray here. Like mm -hmm. I've had, I've had people comment before in a, a, I don't even remember what video, but basically it was something like, why should I listen to you? <laughs> what is your, <laughs> what, what is your background and why are, why should I listen to you? And I just, I, my response is I'm just a guy and it's free. You choose to what listen or you choose not to. That's up to you, you know? Yeah. It's free. What do you want? 